five. So we'll just wait a few minutes for people to start coming in. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, scrub forward a little while. Thank you, Dee. It's gonna be a good day. Really, in my world, just another day. I think every day is my birthday. You want it? Buy it. <laughs> That's how I go through life. So yeah. Otherwise, not much new. It's an absolutely beautiful day here. Gorgeous. Hi, Terry. So I'm grateful for that. And Robert's out doing leaf management. The leaves are going crazy now, which they seem a little bit late this year, but maybe it's just my bad memory. Thank you, Terry. Yep. Be just another day. I might make Robert take me out to dinner, but I know when the time comes, I'll probably just say, nah, I'll, fig I'll fix something here. Don't worry about it. And I'm going to, the reason I'm watercoloring today is because I want to use the new watercolor brush that um, Linda and Tim sent me. Hi, Pam. Um, I threw everything else away I guess so it's a Princeton number eight so I'm excited to give it a try yeah so I just figured do a draw your day and I did a few little quick sketches at Dee Dee's this morning so um kind of got a little bit ahead of the game so yeah nothing else going on here which is a good thing, but we got holidays coming up. So probably going to be crazy. Somebody is putting down or putting up, I guess, the most enormous flagpole. Like, you know, the flagpoles that they have at auto dealerships that hold a flag the size of Texas. <laughs> Somebody's putting up a huge flagpole at the end of our road. Hi, Linda. Thank you. Give Tim a hug, and I will definitely keep him in his, in my prayers. Everybody, keep Tim in your prayers. He's in the hospital. He had a stroke. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, Dee Dee showed some good um, journals this morning made out of magazines. How to scrub out the images, and I, I'm going to have to try that. And I've told her I'm going to. I just haven't. Did I say hi, Alyssa? Thank you, Alyssa. Hi, Missy. Thank you. So, yeah. I don't know. We'll just see. Hi, Barbara. Thank you. Happy birthday to me. Today would have been my grandfather's birthday. His birthday was the 13th. Mine was the 14th. And my dad was the 16th. So, yeah. Hi, Jasper. So we're just going to do quick watercolor today. And Dee, Dee showed um, like gelatos and other water soluble products. I have a bunch of them. Um, but I think most of them are. If you've ever had Neocolor 2s, just save up your money and get a good um, small set that is, um, you know, a good place to start because there's nothing better than Neo color too. He's sitting up and smiling. Oh, Linda, that's good to hear. So you're still waiting. Hi, Barbara. You're still waiting for your invite. Well, you just keep on waiting, girl. There ain't no parties going on around here. None. I might go out to dinner. We'll see. Yeah, the, you know, strokes are can be unbelievable, but the recovery can also be quite amazing. My mother had a stroke in her 60s. And um, she recovered beautifully. I think the trick is catching it early, you know, and, and getting in, getting your rehab and doing what the doctor says. I'm not sure my mother was good at that, but what the hell. Um, the funniest thing ever, though, was my brother and I went down when she had her stroke. And she was in South Texas. And so she was in a little hospital in Brownsville, Texas. And they only kept her like a couple days, I think. And then she was just adamant since us kids were there, she wanted to go across the border to Mexico. 
and her walking and her speech and her um, one arm was obviously affected. And so we got down on the main street in Progreso, Te um, Mexico, and she starts walking down the street and she's walking sideways, just plowing into people. <laughs> it's like, mom, chill, dude, you got to slow down. She was full blast, man. She was not going to let it start, stop her. So tell Tim that story and say, you too can go plow sideways into people in Progreso, Mexico. God, that was funny. Getting that magic medicine quickly. Exactly, Barbara. But it, the recovery can be remarkable. But the funniest thing ever was she couldn't put her own earrings in. And my dad was so nice and so helpful, but he could. she couldn't button her shirts and she couldn't put her earrings in. So my dad was trying to get her earring in and get the back on. And he'd obviously never done anything like that before. Um, yeah. To watch him try and get my mother ready was really funny. You'll tell him, okay, good. Yeah, anything to make him smile and feel better. And I'm, I will definitely get something in the mail to him. Your mom walked to the left. How's she doing now, Pam? Is she doing well? <clears throat> there's tons of reason for hope. I guess that's the moral of the story is there's tons of reason to be hopeful. So I thought today I would, um, I bought these, I think it was because of Lena. I bought these um, Pago, Pagos, I guess is how you pronounce it, 36 watercolors. Um, I don't know if they're student grade. I don't know what they are. Um, but they have nice colors. So I thought, well, um, she's doing a lot better. Yeah, the first few days can just be remarkable. So they're not the best quality, um, but we're just doing a draw your day. So um, I thought I would use them. I don't know what their binder is. I don't really know anything about these other than they're pretty colors and I haven't used them very much. So um, yeah. So we're going to use the Pegos watercolors, which we have no room for. Um, and I'll flip through Draw Your Day. I have a lot of the Draw Your Day um, journals. There's something very appealing about this. It's um, like zero pressure um, drawing and watercoloring it. You don't have to show it to anybody. You can if you want to. I've done this several times. And, you know, I thought there are some really fun things you can do. When I was going through one of them, I found where I had done like a recipe card. That would be another really good thing where you have to draw and watercolor the um, ingredients in a um, recipe, you know, like strawberry jam. Watercolors are perfect for sketches, for sure. So, yeah, this girl, the um, author is Samantha Dion Baker, and she um, her pages are just always so enticing. I think that's one of the things I always come back to, you know, that you can take the most mundane subject and make it interesting and fun and, you know, zero pressure when you're done, you're done. You, you don't have to show it. You don't have to do anything. So, hey, bossy butt, thank you very much. Say happy birthday to your husband for me. So I'll just flip through real quick. And, and she talks about, you know, like drawing everyday objects. I do that a lot. You know, when I don't know what to draw, I'll just draw whatever's on the table, whether it's a pencil, whether it's a cup, whether it's whatever. Um, just keep doing it over and over. One thing I will never draw is a sushi dinner because I don't eat that. Strawberry jam forever. So, and most people have a little bit more exciting life. Like if I did my mail, it would be just nothing but junk. And I, I still wish we could put a trash can out by the mailbox and the mailman could just throw it in there and we wouldn't have to haul it in the house. He took the day off to celebrate. Good on him. And I saw this morning that your house is already framed. 
dang, you guys are moving out. So, and I, every Friday I can do pizza. So it, I think it's just inspirational, you know. It doesn't matter what your drawings look like. In fact, I like that they're a little bit funky. And another thing I like about this, and I'm going to do try and do some of it today, is, you know, complement it with cool lettering. So I actually drew this leaf. I'm going to paint this leaf. Hi, Raul. You don't eat sushi either? Yeah. Um, I'm not allergic. I just, I'm not crazy about raw fish, I guess. But look at something as mundane as a boots. You can do that for sunshine. So it's just a very cool book. And I can't even tell you how often I look at this book. Because it is inspiring to me. And a lot of days I take notes of what I would put in Draw My Day, but then I never go back and draw it. So, but today we're doing it. Not that much. I'm actually going to do yesterday um, because other than watch Dee Dee on the computer, I've not done anything today. Oh, no, I did eat some peanut butter toast. That's my favorite breakfast or one of my favorites. And then art supplies. Who doesn't love art supplies? And swatches, you can always do good swatches. And then she also has another book in addition to this one. But even if you just got the book and drew her day, don't even just draw her day. Just something to make you do something. And then this book came with a companion draw your day sketchbook, which I'm not crazy about drawing in other people's books, but I bought it anyway, because there's cool little drawings and watercolors in it. So maybe someday I'll decide, okay, or maybe just draw that thing that she's drawn, you know? You do pizza most Fridays too? Bring your mom over? Yeah, I eat pizza every Friday. Every Friday. It's kind of like, to me, a day off, you know. And all I do is I make my own, but I start with an inexpensive crust that already has, you know, like either cheese or pepperoni or something on it. And then add my own whatever I have to it. And it always comes out good. Robert always likes it. Robert always likes it because I make him a milkshake, too. I quit the milkshakes because I can't tolerate dairy anymore. And then, in addition to Draw Your Day, she has Draw Your World. And this has, I think, a little bit more extensive drawings in it, um, if you're a beginner. But it's just a gorgeous book. Why wouldn't you want it? They just draw on the brick. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I just, I've already drawn a few little things from my day yesterday. So, a lot more architecture in this one. So, candy corn, that's not even, you shouldn't even put that in your mouth. It's not even food. I do have candy on my page, though. And then we'll see how I can do with this um, Pegos watercolor set. So I guess I just want you guys inspired. You don't have to buy the book. Just sit down and do draw your day. Whatever. A lot of information in these. Because I do read um, the verbiage too. I don't just look at the pictures. Rawl's making you hungry. Rawl makes me hungry all the time. He's always talking about what he's cooking, whatever. It's like, settle down, buddy. Hi, Princess Nicole. And hi, Jen. What did you draw yesterday? I'm going to show you here in a minute, Jen. Well, I didn't draw it yesterday. I drew it this morning. Yesterday, I don't think I drew it all. Yesterday, I was cleaning up messes and doing laundry. And 
I don't know. I don't know where the days go. <clears throat> so anyway, yeah, Samantha Dion Baker. She's very inspiring and it's very simple. So hi, Jilly. What are the Canadian tire commercials? That's like a department store, isn't it? I mean, I know they sell tires there, but um, yeah. So I'm not drawing it in the beast um, because my beast has become so small. If I was going to do draw your day, I'd have to do it in that much space, which, you know, I could still do it. Just pick one thing from the day and draw it. Um, but yeah. So I did it in this because I wanted to work on watercolor paper and give this new brush a good run. Um, I should have probably washed it. Let me see if I can wet and get the sizing off the bristles here. Yeah. So let me pull you guys down. Oh, God, look at that. Focus, you freak. Give it a second. <laughs> yeah, I like doing textures. In fact, I almost did nothing but textures. I've got a Claudia Nice book. Claudia Nice does really good watercolor um, instruction books, and they're very inspirational. And um, she has one. I can't remember what it's called, but it's something drawing texture with pen and ink or something like that. And I thought, oh, that sounds fun, too. Hi, Bob. Who's Bob? Janet, will there be a streamathon? I would like to co-host. I have not heard anything about the um, streamathon for New Year's Eve. So I think what um, will happen is like Didi and I, we looked it up the other day. We'll just do our regular normal stream on, I think it's a Monday. Let me check. Do I have a, I don't have a December calendar. Never mind. Um, Bob Ross. Oh, little Bob here. Little Bob. Um, hi, Dorothy. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Anyway, um, <clears throat> well, about the Claudia Nice books. But then I decided, nope, I'm going to do Draw Your Day because I was messing with some lettering. Oh, and then last week, I think I showed you guys. Let me see where it is. Um, ideas for the scavenger hunt because I already know that we're going to be doing alphabets. So I did... Um, make a page for every letter of the alphabet and started writing down words and kitty jen you asked me if we could do another um story today because you like drawing along and, and drawing the things that i do for a story like a zine or something um you could almost use this and, and it's what i intend to do like deb Didi's three prompt challenges that she do does i'm going to use these to create a page um, of three or four things that begin with A. Um, now you can just cut stuff out and slap it on the page. You can do whatever you want, but I thought I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do Dee Dee's three prompt um, challenges for these. So I was just goofing around with lettering over the weekend and the last week. And so I did one illuminated letter um, because as part of my page, I'm going to go ahead and use the words that I used. So I did get all the illuminated letters done in my little journal here. And then I haven't looked anything up yet. Okay. These are just things out of my head. So like, for example, the letter A for, um, Animals or people, I have alligator, ape, armadillo, ant, anteater, acrobat, Alice in Wonderland, 
acting albino allergic arrow. I don't know why I thought of albino. That's a weird word to think of. An arrow, avocado, apple. So as I was doing the letter, um, I was just thinking up, you know, things that I could incorporate into a page and try and make it somewhat cohesive. Now that's going to be a tall order. So I don't know that I'm going to be um, successful, but if I get some of the pages, that's good. So on this one, if I just randomly pick, Dee Dee typically just says, you know, does a number thing or something, but I'll just say an acrobat, an albino acrobat allergic to avocados. So I would have to draw a page, something about that. So the acrobat might have, she might be scratching her arm while she's up on the trampeze and there could be ants crawling underneath, you know, who knows? Aardvark. All right. We're putting aardvark. And aardvark is an anteater, isn't it? Will it be 26 alphabet prompts and the rest 74? Yes, Raul, that's what it would be. It will be 26 alphabet prompts um, and then 74 others. Yep. You'll draw the acrobat girl from Haunted Mansion with the alligator. Hi, CB. Yes, and termites. Okay, we'll see you later, bossy butt. Now I get to do what I want now. I don't have to do what she says. So some of the letters are harder than others, you know, like for Q, queen, quail, quokka. And that I learned at Dee Dee's. I didn't even know what that was. But I sat here for the longest time thinking, what was that thing I heard at Dee Dee's? Um, quiet, quit, quest, question, and the location. I'm going to add a location in there too. Food, really anything. Birthday cheese. Thanks, Devin. Axolotl. Oh, axolotl. That's a good one. I'll have to T Y L. I don't know how to spell it, but that'll get me at least look it up. Quibbler, Janet, the newspaper of Luna Love Goo Potter. Oh my God, Raul. Quill. You know, the one I had the most trouble with, most of, you know, I have some pretty good ones here and there. Um, but the one that you can't think of anything, oh, I just thought of one, underdog. All right, I'll probably do a page of underdog. So I don't care if it's a cartoon, but you, all I thought of was unicorn, umbrella, and ukulele. Janet, you're good in making newspaper. Make a quibbler. All right. I'll have to look that up and see. So, hi, Chris. Thank you. Thanks a lot. She knows how to spell it. So, yeah. So, that's what this book is. It's just a place for me to write down the ideas so that when I decide to do a page for the scavenger hunt from the alphabet... I already have some ideas um, generated. Underwear. Underoos. Dee Dee. Underoos. Why didn't I think of underoos? God, that's one of my favorite words. Underoos. A unicorn in underoos. Yeah, baby. And if I'm really stuck, I mean, I don't, I'm just doing this as much as anything. I have unicorn. Um... I can look it up. I mean, I have dictionaries. I have thesauruses. I have everything. Um, but I think the interesting thing about this will be, and we saw it in Dee Dee's prompts, is if I use emotions or states of being, whatever. Here's for M. I have monkey, mouse, moans, munches, money, mushroom. Oh, I have money here too. Money. I must have been really thinking about money. Montana, Miami, Monkey Island. So... Um, it could be a mouse moaning about money in Montana. So urchin, I have umbrella. That was one of the few words I could think of. Urchin, look at you guys giving me ideas. 
but honestly if i wanted to i could go to a th thesaurus and look up any of them right i'm just not m m's all right see you guys give me ideas i write them down ufo dang raul raul is on these english u words ufo would actually be a fun one mirage mirror mocktail mountain look at barbara mirage would be a good one too mirage mirror a mocktail is a fake um cocktail right and mountain all right look at that doing grammar exercises in Chris's class today. <clears throat> okay, just going back really quickly to chat, see if I've missed anybody. Wendy, X is killing you. X, what do I have for X? I probably don't have anything for X. Yeah, look at X. I didn't think of a single thing. The, the most obvious is xylophone. Um, yeah, the X is going to be a hard one. So maybe my X page will be nothing but a great big, um, illuminated letter. So yeah, X-ray. And there's nothing that says you can't make stuff up too. Mocktail is a virgin cocktail without the booze. Yeah, that's what I thought. Mongoose, that's another one. I've never drawn a mongoose, for sure. So, yeah, you know, start your own book, whatever. Um, I did get a xylophone. That's the only one that I knew. I don't know what I did for Z either. Zebra is what I have for Z. See, Wendy, that was um, my idea, too. I don't want to, if I can use stuff that I can think of out of my brain, that um, I'd rather do that than look it up. Looking it up, to me, feels like cheating, even though it's not. Zipper. A xylophone with a, z no, xylophone is X. Zipper. So, yeah. Zoo, look at you guys. So, yeah, this is just kind of my idea book going in. Um, hey, Christopher, Didi said the other day that you're getting into Zentangle. Do you want to see my book before I start painting? Oh, and I just, I was cutting out some stuff and I saw this bird and I thought, oh, I'll put that in there. So it's just going to hang out on the B page. Xanadu. Oh, you guys, I'm going to have to get the book out again. Is Xanadu a real place or is that... Elon. Okay, I'll show it to you. Elon, what's Elon? Use Zentangle for Z. Look at you guys. Got it. All right. I'll pull out the Zentangle box. I'm going to pull the camera way, way out because it takes up a lot of room and leave a focus you freak with Bob here while I go retrieve it. In Xanadu did Kubla Khan a stately pleasure dome decree. Damn. X. Oh, X. Yeah, like Twitter. Old Twitter. X. I would just call that a war zone, Judy. Okay, get ready, Christopher. This took some time. 
normally what I did was a few, I don't know, not hours. Um, I'm a little slow to learn, Dee Dee. Um, so I made the box. I have to move all this junk out of the way. Um, I made the box. I used to keep my cards in a three ring binder with um, trading card sleeves. And as you added new ones, hey, Martha, as you added new ones, you had to move everything around in the sleeves or add an extra sleeve. And it was just not working for me. It was driving me crazy. Um, so then I got this idea. I thought about a Rolodex, you know, that I could do a Rolodex or something like that. And then I just thought, why don't I just put the cards alphabetically in a box and then I can move them around. I can alphabetize them because, you know, guys know I'm big on that sort of stuff. That if I want to look something up, I can just go find it. So each letter of the alphabet, because all Zen Tangles have names. And you can go to tanglepatterns.com, Pinterest, Instagram. Um, so each tangle has a card with the step outs of how you draw it. And I have, I don't know, we guessed at one time. Would we guess, Dee Dee, over 600 cards in this book, probably? Some of them I like better than others, obviously. And then for some of them, I made these little cards to show what they look like when they're drawn big. But it's hard to look through the each of the cards to find cool designs that you love to draw, right? So there's a companion book. It, that's true. How many are there, Terry? All the Zentangles with the letter Z. There's Xander, Zante, Zazzy, Zebra, Zenith. Oh, there's enough. You could do a page. Zenbud, Zinger. Zinger is one of my favorites. Zinger Hats, Zipper, and Zarath. You're brilliant. Terry. So anyway, the companion book, um, is a sample and most of them I just photocopied. I just took the cards and photocopied them <clears throat> and then put them in the book. And there's three sections in here, but the sections aren't working that really good, really. Anyway, but they're like, Ran grid patterns, um, borders, you know, the ones that make good borders, and then just random patterns. So um, well, Terry, you know where to come to get all of them. So then I can just flip through the book, find out what designs I want to draw, and um then go pull the card to see the step outs if I can't figure out how to draw it. A lot of them you can just figure out or make them up, you know. But I find it um, very relaxing. I enjoy doing it. I think it's always cool when it's done. And then the box, because I designed it and made it myself, the little companion book has its own little space right there that it just sits in. And then the roof of the box and then i just wallpapered the box i think i did that on stream actually so and then i did a couple of the boxes and gave them away i think zowie wowie they fill you full of zeal i'm so happy christopher because you inspire me to draw comics zounds that's a fantastic box. So there you go. There's an idea for how to collect, store, and love your Zentangle patterns. And it just sits over here on a shelf. Always ready for me to dig it out. And here's another box for people who don't have as many designs. 
Here's another little box. I don't know what's in here right now. Oh, look, it's some zines. Huh, I'll put those in the zine box because they don't really belong in here. You think they're great despite having to use all the Z words? Yeah, Z is a hard one. So anyway, um, <clears throat> got one a box. Okay, yeah, I knew I'd done another box. Zines, yeah. This was, actually, this one was um, one of Dee Dee's three prompt zines. My um, prompts were Peru, Pumpkin, and, and Pond is what it was. Because I had to figure out how to get the pumpkin close to the pond in Peru. So... It was about a path up to Machu Picchu. I didn't even know these were missing. And then a monster's who who's who's who. Okay. This one was a fun one. I did like this one. Just monsters and their stories. And I'm still writing the stories for the um, for the monster journal. I haven't worked on it in a while because Inktober takes over your whole lip and life. But I have to say there's an empty spot when it's over with. So let's get on and do something like real today. Let's do a draw your day. And while I was at Dee Dee's this morning, I did do a few little sketches of my day from yesterday. Because yesterday was a pretty typical Sunday around here. Not much goes on. I don't think I arted, maybe a little bit. I might have done one of those um, illuminated letters. But otherwise, I did cleaning and laundry and junk like that. And I'm going to use the Pagos watercolors. I've not used these much, but I'm sure they'll work awesome, just like all the other student grade. Thanks, Christopher. So I'm going to watercolor, and um, I don't remember how the Draw Your Day girl does it. But I like the look of watercolor with ink on top. Yeah, she does watercolor with ink on top. So you can do it however you want, but I think I'm going to do the watercolor and then do um, ink on top. Focus, your freak. <clears throat> so... I don't know how much of the sketch you can see, but um, I've got the leaf because right now the leaves are just crazy around here. Robert is on full-time leaf management removal. Um, I drew a little squirrel because right now the squirrels are going cuckoo crazy for, um, we have a oak tree in the front yard that the acorns are starting to fall. So the squirrels are just going crazy. Um, last night for dinner, I made a fruit salad. I got my regular drink and I did laundry and then I ate Rolos. <laughs> That's why I was drawing, drawing Rolos. What the hell? I just had something come up on my screen. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and, um, let me see. That was in Draw Your World, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't need to look it up because you can figure out. I'll try and keep, hmm, how do I want to do this? Because I don't have a ton of room here. Move the water over there. Do you guys want the watercolor palette up on the desk? It's a little hard. I'm going to go ahead and clean off that mixing area. Have you found the dark chocolate with salted caramel? I have not. 
the Rolos have dark chocolate with salted caramel. I don't very often buy candy, you guys, because, well, if I buy it, I'd have to eat it all the day I bought it, or Robert would eat it before I got it. Why did I highlight you, CB, laughing out loud? What the hell are you laughing at? Um, are they Rolos, Barbara? All right. This is my new paintbrush while we're doing this today that Tim and Linda sent me. And please, again, keep Tim in your prayers. Give myself a little bit of place to work. I could have tried to use some of those colors, but yeah, I'm not good at that. Doesn't have to be perfect, but then I know if it's I screw up, I screwed up all on my own. Not because I left a mess. Now, this is one of the few things that I will leave product on is a watercolor palette. So we'll do the leaf first because that should be easy. I have to kind of get used to, you know what? I think I will spray this just to make it easier for my dad. So. Is attempting to reach you on your cellular device. Oh. An idiot is attempting to reach you on your cellular. Hang on. An idiot is it. Hey, can I call you back later? Yeah. Okay. About four. Okay. See you. Bye. Okay. Probably my brother. I mean, it was my brother probably talking about Thanksgiving. Okay. How did I get this pop out? Hang on. Let me fix my screen here. There we go. That's better. Bye, Christopher. Have a great stream. Raking leaves. You're, ra you're racking leaves. <laughs> okay. This is going to be hard because there's no room here. Let me move out a little bit. Move this before I knock it over. Dee Dee's going, it's not me. Go ahead and answer. It's not me. Okay. This isn't going to work, so let me see if I've got a clean palette in here. This will work better, and I'll move the paint over here. Sorry, you're just not going to be able to see the paint palette. Okay, that's a better setup. Get a little bit of... Holds a lot of water, I'll say that for this new brush. The oak tree, this would be a leaf off the oak tree. This is the color of the oak leaves. We've got a maple tree across the street. It is so bright red, it's not even funny this year. And maple trees hang on to their um, leaves for a long time. So... Um, yeah, that should stay red and really pretty for a long time. And this morning when I went out, um, the lake was as pretty as I've ever seen it with the sun hitting it. I took a picture um, and I might do a painting of it looking out my back door. Oh, it was so gorgeous this morning.
that's one thing, you know, I, I as a rule, do not have trouble um, being grateful about anything, really. Um, but when I walk out um, and look out back and the lake is there and it now when it's cold, it's not so inviting. But when I go out there and it's um, just so beautiful, I mean, you can't help but stop and just say, I don't know what I did to deserve this, but I have got to be the luckiest person on earth. <clears throat> and this is one of those things you don't have to worry too much about, you know, just Whatever you paint or draw, it's going to be okay. We're not talking fine art here. I did watch, well, I didn't exactly watch, but I listened to... Um, Lindsay, um, the frugal crafter this weekend, because I needed a video that was just long and something I'd be interested in listening to. And she did a review of all of her watercolor palettes. Honest to God, if you ever feel bad about how many watercolors or watercolor palettes you have, go watch Lindsay. Um, that girl has an unbelievable number of them, but she get um, as she's going through them, she was talking about, you know, the one she liked, the one she didn't, what she thought. Um, and um, she has got a ton of watercolors. But I have to say, I learned quite a bit about um, the different grades. And um, I'm going to do the squirrel next because it's going to be probably somewhat kind of the same color. But I have to say, it was very informative. And um, very fun to listen to her talk about where she got them, how much she paid, you know, the good points, the bad points. I'm going to mix a little bit darker. That is the color. I'm going to add a little bit of brown to that and see if I can't get a little bit darker for the base of the little squirrely guy. Yeah, that'll be better. Maybe a little bit browner. You don't have to worry about erasing any of your pencil marks or anything when you're going to go over it with ink. And nothing is to scale, so my cup will be smaller than the squirrel, when in fact my cup is bigger than the squirrel. I saw a really funny video on um, oh, somewhere of a squirrel that was on top of a table at an outdoor restaurant stealing all the napkins to go make his nest for winter. And one thing I do, um, I have really long hair. You got most of you guys know. And so I'm cleaning out my brush constantly. And um, when I take the hair out of my brush, I do um, throw it out in the backyard. So squirrels and other little animals um, can put it in their nests. I read that a long, long time ago, and I've always done it. When I clean my brush or yank the hairs out, I just throw it outside. His little nose. Oops, I got a hump on his nose. I guess I have to fatten out his head a little bit.
And I will add a darker brown to this. This is just the base. Oh, I probably should tell you what journal this is too. I'm going to have to look because I don't know. Let me look and see if I can find out. But I have to say I like the um, I like the paper. Indigo Art Papers, Handmade Watercolor Wiro Pad. There you go. That's what it is. Indigo Art Papers. And that probably came wrapped around the journal when I bought it. Um, and then I just cut it out and saved it. Now I'm going to pick up some of that color. That's the nice thing about watercolor paper. You can re-wet it pretty easily and pick up the paint. So you can't get it back to white, but you can get it close. And then his little belly fur is white. So I think I will take some of the white And I had enough brown left in my um, brush that I'll probably just do that. So you know that his little fat belly. Sorry, I'm trying to keep you guys in frame. doesn't have any white on his tail, but he does have a dark brown. I'll ink in um, a lot of his tail feathers. This brown just isn't dark enough, so I'm going to add just a hair of black to it. That's better. I'm going to let that dry for a minute, and then I'll put that crease in there a lot darker. I know, my allergies. And I have, um, I have totally given up milk. I mean, I am eating zero dairy products. I ate maybe a half a teaspoon of butter this morning on my toast. I've even gone so, that far just to try and control it somewhat. <sighs> All right, and the nut that he's eating, I think I'm also going to do dark. The acorns are actually about the color of the squirrel, but I'm going to do a dark nut. Dark nut. 
and mix some more of the black in there. You'll notice I didn't draw the little squirrel hands. Um, I might add those back in just a little while because it's they're just too hard to paint around. So but the squirrels are gonna eat good this year because we're having a bumper crop of acorns, I swear to god. I hadn't I haven't gone over and checked the pecans. Um but the acorns, it's a bumper crop this year. When you're sitting, um, watching TV or whatever, um, and they start, the wind starts blowing, and they start hitting the house, man, it sounds like you are absolutely under attack. Okay, I'm going to water this down. I'll probably add his fur back more um, with a pen. Haven't decided which pen I'm going to use yet, though. I'm trying to get rid of that hard line there. Okay. We'll let him dry and we'll come back and do his details in a minute. I'm going to look up a pineapple. All right, which one looks reasonable? Geez, they're not too far. I guess fall colors are kind of um, that way. Huh? We'll go with the darker yellow to start with. When you have a limited palette, it's actually kind of nice because um, you got to just use what you have there. So I'm going to go ahead and um, paint the pineapple all yellow first. Let it dry and then paint on top of it. Look at what greens. Now, the, see, the greens in this set are pitiful. I guess I'll end up going with that one. Those two. And then for the laundry, I'll just use whatever's left in the palette to do the laundry. Because I'm painting so small, I don't need much paint of any of these colors. You guys, I don't buy 
full pineapples anymore. I used to buy them and clean them. Um, then when we started going to Mexico, you could just buy them already cleaned. And that's when I decided I am never, ever cleaning another pineapple myself, ever. So now I buy them at Sam's Club in those containers that they've cleaned them and cut them up for you. Fresh pineapple. And I'm good with that. Because I... I do love pineapple, love it, but um, I don't like to clean it, so yeah, just buy it at Sam's Club, it's pricey, but who cares. All right, that green is not dark enough, so I'm going to add just a touch of the lighter of the two browns see if i can darken it up a little maybe that was too much let's see that'll be fine Because I'll draw in with ink the individual. Little leaves. And usually when I make fruit salad, I just use whatever... Um, fruit I have on hand. It doesn't matter if it's fresh, frozen, um, but I always try and have some fresh. Let's see what the purple is like. I always have to have a little like cheat sheet. I'm not loving this red, I have to say. Mm, that'll be okay. But anyway, last night's fruit salad, I'll tell you guys what I made us for dinner. I made stew, beef stew, potatoes and carrots and onions and celery and stuff. And it was delicious and we have enough for leftovers tonight. And um, bread and fruit salad. Fruit salad is Robert's favorite thing in the whole world. So I typically make fruit salad at least a couple times a week. And it's easy because all you got to do is cut up the junk. And um, yeah. Makes a good fruit salad. And I throw some little bit of yogurt in it. He loves it. This is kind of crazy because now I'm just mixing them right here on the the paper. We'll let that dry and then I'll add another um, coat of the red. So last night it had pineapple, cherries, grapes, and banana in it. And it was good. I'll check chat right now real quick.
I didn't know. Hi, Brenda. Raul, I did not know that you had undergone cancer treatment. Is Icy here? Hi, Icy. Yeah, no, turkey doesn't, cleaning and cooking a turkey doesn't bother me. It's probably one of the easiest meals um, to feed a large group that you can find anywhere. But yeah, I don't mind that. I think my biggest problem with the um, cleaning a pineapple is that the um, it's pokey and you feel like you're wasting so much of it. So yeah, that's um, why I'm, I'm just not crazy about it. It's just not the easiest thing in the world to clean. And you cannot beat the this one's at Sam's Club. And we always have bananas around. I don't right now, but no, I used the last one last night. But, yeah, I always have bananas around. And then I had red grapes, but they're kind of like the cherries. They're more purpley. But I'm going to use purple. And on these, I'm just going to make it look like a great big blob. This paper does dry quickly. Um, and then I'll draw them in with ink. So... And then I should have pulled out the yogurt container to see what it looks like because I'm not sure how I'm going to paint it. I think I'll use the white with a little bit of brown in it because it is a white container. It's just vanilla flavored Greek yogurt that I get at Sam's Club. We'll just use this because most of the detail I'm going to do with pen. I didn't draw the back of the box, so, or the container. That's all right. We'll just make it end there because we can. Oh, and then I was going to do some more leaves around this little squirrel down here. So we'll go back and use the. Paint from that. Hmm, I think that's the mixed color, so. And make these a little bit more yellow, add their yellow ochre in it. None of their paints have names, so you're just guessing, and that's cool. I always like when the leaves start turning and then when they start trashing everything out, I'm over them. Like, okay, let's get this done. I'm done. I 
And because we have this giant oak um, out front and a sycamore in the back, I think unless you live in the south, you aren't familiar with sycamore trees, but sycamore leaves get huge. They are like, they can be the size of a dinner plate. They're so flipping huge. And they're always the very last to fall. So um, <clears throat> this will go on for months, months and months. I need to play with these paints more. Never run into a pile of leaves while holding wet lollipop. That's some great advice, Barbara. We're so lucky to have you. Okay, so pretty much everything's getting dry. I can go back and work on top of it now. And get some more of that dark, dark brown. And add some little bit of black to it to make it really dark. And now we'll give the squirrel his little shading. This brush does um, hold a lot of water very nicely. So, and it's again a Princeton Aqua Elite size eight. And Linda and Tim sent it to me and that's why I wanted to watercolor today to give it a test run and see. And I have to say it, it's nice, holds water very nicely. So I'm happy about that. I am looking at a um, image here, but I've shrunk it down so much that, um, yeah. And I think I'll go in. I don't normally use the black, but I think I will just to see what this black Pagos watercolor is like. The squirrel will look better with an eye, I think. I might end up having to um, use a white pen too. I don't know, we'll see. 
We'll see, we'll see. Yeah, I will. I will end up using a white pen. When you see painted fruit, it makes you think of phonics school papers. Okay, CB. Yeah, he's a cute little baby. They are cute. They annoy the hell out of me. I have to say that the squirrels in the spring when I'm trying to plant stuff and or the new stuff is coming up, I have to say they annoy the hell out of me. But like right now when they're preparing for winter and they're all scurrying around and they're, they're cute as hell. But sometimes I really want to kick their ass. Okay, and now I'm just, this isn't going to look at anything because it is um, just the drawing on my cup. And most of it I will do um, with the ink because it's black later. And I'm having to look at the cup while I because I didn't really draw it out. So we'll see how well I do. And then the lettering I will absolutely do. I have to let that dry before I can add the blue. Um, but the lettering I'll do with a pen. Let that dry real quick. Let me put some stems on the cherries now that they're dry and I can work up next to them. I think the cherries that I have are the last we're going to get. Oops. We'll still get grapes, but I think the cherries are done deal. Pretty soon that will be like almost no fruit. You've got a couple of squirrels who eat most of the birds so you're always hanging yeah yeah if you put food out for them you've just trained them to come back all right so i'm just going to use some of the paint that i have here i might add some different colors to it um but this here that you can't really discern at all that's just a pile of laundry so i don't really know what was in the laundry pants and jeans and sweatshirts but i'm just going to do every color of something and I don't actually do laundry like that um like all the whites go together or all the you know but I'm gonna look make it look like or maybe this is a pile of laundry before I sort it maybe that's what it is Sunday is always my laundry day. And usually wash the kitchen floor day.
Here we'll add some little bit of blue because there's always something blue in the laundry. Oh, you're still here doing other stuff? Well, I hope he figures out what it is, CB, because electricians are never any fun. I had to hire one not very long ago to put a new um, outlet for my um, new garage door opener. And to get the new thing costs as much as the damn garage door opener. <laughs> Not even kidding. It was redonkulous. But what are you going to do? Another nice thing about using up paint like this is it's always good to um, try and repeat the same color. Um, so, yeah, I don't mind using up the paint this way. I can promise you I did not wash anything purple yesterday. Blue and black, usually. You had to get a whole electrical panel. Yeah, it is, Barbara. A whole day without electricity makes you think of your ancestors, doesn't it? What the hell did they do without it? I can't even imagine. I mean, yeah, can't even imagine. Guess it was just a different way of life, and maybe it might have been preferable. I mean, honestly. Hey, Cat and Paste. We're doing a fun draw your day here. And I'm not exactly letting this paint dry. I probably should, but. You'd think we wear orange clothes, too. We don't wear any orange clothes. You just curl up with a book. Yeah, see, that's what I tend to do. If, if it's daylight and I can draw or I can read, not a problem. But, yeah, if I don't... At night, it's probably harder. During the day wouldn't be so hard because I could just clean. The problem is, unless I, if I'm not um, listening to something, you know, a podcast or something like that, cleaning might be hard. I've gotten so used to, you know, listening to at least learning something or. Yeah, that might even be hard. We are spoiled rotten, you people. I hope you recognize. How utterly spoiled we are. Put blue up next to the orange. And it should make it help pop. I didn't exact. I thought that was dry, but that's okay. It's just a pile of laundry. Who cares? I'll add some red. And leave some white spaces. Um, unless it's somewhere in the south. Yeah, somewhere in the south it stays late really, really. Stays light really, really late. But this dark at 6 o'clock is starting to annoy me. I don't mind saying that. 
because most nights I'm ready to go to bed like at 7 o'clock then. Got to be bedtime by now. All right, I'm going to let that dry. Let me hit it with a heat gun because I want to finish that thing on the cup so I can do the edges gray. Yeah, I think that's dry enough. All right, so kind of a little bit of light blue. And some of this I'm just taking direct. There's not even any point in taking the paint out of the palette, so I'm just painting directly from the palette. Um, a little bit harder to control that way, but... That's really small. You guys can't see it. I don't know if you'll be able to tell what, well, you probably won't be able to tell what it is even when I'm done. So, Here I am painting up next to wet paint again, which is not the smartest thing in the world. And then I need the brown for his face again. I think I used all my brown. Keep in mind, I live in Oklahoma. So that's why we ha would have this logo on the side of a cup. What do you think of when you think of Oklahoma? Other than redneck hillbillies. Okay. You mean the heat? No, oh, the heat in the south. Ugh, shoot me dead. All right. I'm going to add some red to this pile of laundry and we're going to call it done. And then I'll do some highlights on the washer. And I can always add more black. I think I will right now. Indian. Yep. On the side of my cup is a uh, Indian. Don't let CB steal your answer, Martha. Go over and whack her upside the head if you want. Okay, now that I've got kind of the shape of the Indian... I'll show you the logo off the cup, but I have to turn the cup sideways, so hopefully I won't spill anything. But can you see the... Yeah. A surrey with a fringe on top? Well, of course, they're everywhere, Barbara. If you came here, you'd see them everywhere. Everywhere, I tell you. All right. Um, the washer's going to be... Weird because my washer is white. So let me just do a little bit of gray.
Oh, which reminds me, Martha, I don't think I um, have talked to you. Um, rock friend died. Which is great news that you want to hear when you come to my stream, but yep. I found out on Facebook. Don't know why. But you can look his obituary up on the internet. All right. The Indian is dry enough. I'll do the gray on the side of the cup, too. And for those of you who don't know, Martha Audette in chat is my sister, my one and only sister. She's supposed to be out raking leaves, so I don't know what the hell she's doing. All right, I need a sop up towel. Let's see if I can pick up a little bit of that gray. Martha, you lucky devil. She is very lucky. She's beat the crap out of me. Oh, I didn't want to do that. All right. And the only other thing I really have left to paint is the Rolos. And then everything else I'm going to be doing lettering. And, um... You guys know what Rolos are, don't you? There's really not a dark brown in this set. That's kind of a bummer. Pagos, you need to fix that. Until you paint something, you don't know how often you use like the browns and stuff like that. Yeah, that's about the color of chocolate, isn't it? It was milk chocolate. That's sad, my word. He was, have lots about your age. I'll call you tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, I knew you'd call tomorrow. Have to go get my monthly cocktail until noon. Have lots of family. Oh, sweet. Um, all right. Well, I will look forward to tomorrow then. These Rolos are going to be weird. Um. Most of the detail I'll do with the black pen and um, what highlights. Because otherwise, um, it won't look like chocolate. It was sad, Martha. It made me very sad. It was so un unexpected, you know. And Rock was, um, I don't know. I'm going to say he was maybe three or four years older than me, at least. Rock was a good egg. Rock was my cousin.
or our cousin. I'm going to let that dry and then put a little bit lighter in the center. I'll hit it with a heat gun. Speed this little thing up. Real great. Hey, sister. My sister's in chat. You have to tell us why your sister beat you up. Martha, tell them why you beat me up all the time. Probably because I took her stuff. Um, okay. One time I remember she beat me up because she bought, I, I was, I'm eight years younger than her because she's the old one. And, um, and I'm the smart one. And anyway, um, I didn't, I had a record player, but she had a nicer one. Um, but I do remember one time she about beat the crap out of me. I maybe wanted to kill me, maybe did almost try and kill me because she had just bought the record. The night has a thousand eyes. Do you remember that Martha? She had just bought that record and I love that song. I, I stole it from her room and I took it up to my room and I played it over and over and over. And my record player was probably pretty crappy. So by the time my needle got done with the record, it was, probably not even usable but at the time I didn't know that but the night has a thousand eyes right she about killed me over that I remember that very clearly but I'm going to give Martha a lot of credit um she was very kind and generous with us younger kids and she took care of us a lot and when every Friday she drove a um a green nova and I don't know what year this was. She can probably tell you. But she got paid every Friday. And so every Friday she would come home from work with her paycheck and take us to A&W Root Beer and buy us all treats. So I probably deserved all the ass kicking I got, sister. Quite possibly. But I think a lot of our problem, because after um, I grew up and got my own apartment and she um, came home, she had married a guy in the military. Um, they had been in Germany and um, when she came home from Germany, we were like best buddies. So, but yeah, she about killed me over the night has a thousand eyes. Does that look like the caramel in Rolos? All right, now I need some of the lighter brown again. I need to clean this brush better. Yes, that'll be fine. She must not be paying any attention at all. And um, she's not wrong about um, me being a little bit spoiled. Because remember, there were five boys, and there was a boy between Martha and I, and then I was the only baby girl. So, yeah. Yeah, she is correct. Wish I didn't have to type the things we did. Holy shit. <laughs> you got to leave, Martha? Yeah, no, she's still here. She gets her... Um, her monthly cocktail tomorrow. I thought that dry paint would hold that, but it didn't. So we'll just spread the caramel back out. If we need to add some more, we'll just add a little bit more. 
And I didn't buy a bunch of Rolos. I had like six of them total and I ate two a day until they were gone. All right. And I'm going to give myself, even though I don't have one, but my favorite are the red straws. So I'm going to give myself a red straw, even though I didn't really have a red straw. Robert forgets. All right. Well, I have this red on. I'll go over the cherry again. Highlights and stuff like that I'll do all at the end with the awesome Artistro um, white paint pen. Okay. Okay. Um. You know what? After using these Pego paints, I kind of understand now why I don't use them a lot. It's almost like, in fact, I may get a different set out right now to do some different colors. The I don't I don't know what the binding in these is, but they're kind of slimy. I don't even know how to describe it, but they're kind of slimy. So maybe that's why I don't get them out and use them often is because I don't particularly care for the slimy um, binder. The colors aren't bad, though. I don't mind the colors. I will get out um, another set that I don't use often, which is pretty excellent. Let's see how these are. They have better greens, that's for dang sure. All right, we'll do some of the highlights with this because that one purple in there that I wanted to use, it's just too slimy. Hi, Kberg. I filled one bag of leaves. Now I'm on another break. Get, you need to hire some guy with a riding lawnmower that can go out and mulch them, Martha. What the hell is the matter with you? There's not a good purple in here either. What the hell? All right, never mind. Bad idea. Let me get out the Daniel Smith or the yeah, M. Grams, one of them. That's the problem is you get familiar with a particular set of paints that you like, and then you um, grade everything else against that. And if you get used to, say, an M. Graham or a Daniel Smith, you don't want to go backwards. That's just that. Ah, chores awake. Tomorrow's another day. All right, so I'll use the dioxazine. Oops, is that the one? Let me see. Yeah. That'd be good. I'm going to have to look up and see what the Pagos um, binder is. Because, honestly, there, there's something really slimy about them. Raking leaves is hard work. Slimy like go gopher guts asking for a friend. How do you know about gopher guts, Barbara? That's what I want to know. You're mulching the leaves on the grass. Need that for the gardens. This is nasty stuff on the patio. Yeah, see, that's what Robert does is just mulch them up. We just leave them in the yard. Um, used to be the gated neighborhoods would haul theirs down here and we would compost them but thank god we stopped that nonsense all right what else did i have to do oh 
Where's my cheat sheet for the... All right, now I've lost my cheat sheet, you guys. Big trouble. Big, big trouble. What? Oh, it's in my lap. Oh, man, I'm a dumbass. Um, yeah, when you get used to um, certain paints, don't try and go backwards. What was I thinking? This is the color of cherries. That's so much better. So much better. Very better. All right, we need to finish the pineapple and then I'm gonna start using the, um, the pen. And hopefully doing some of the little bit of lettering. How about that? You like that? Oh, did I get rid of the pineapple? What the hell is the matter with me? All right. We'll finish up the pineapple. And then I'll start in with the ink. And it'll start looking so much better. Which pineapple did I choose? The, I think the yellow one. Whichever, they're all about the same. You know what? I should do the green first, I think. I'm going to do the green first. I'm not sure that it really matters. Um, but I will have sectioned off the pineapple. Um, with the green. This is the easiest way, rather than drawing each little section. If I was doing a pineapple, I wouldn't do it this way, okay? This is almost like the cartoon way. All right. Now I'm going to get out some quinacridone nickel gold, I think, will be a good color mixed with a little bit of sienna. All right, this will be better.
and then the little hooks in the center of the pineapple, I'll do with the pen. Because sometimes it's just too small to do with a with the paint. I'm working pretty small there. And I'll do the stuff on, well, I think I got a little bit of the dark, dark here. So let's. Um, I have to say, I like the point on this brush very much. See how fine a little line I can get here. I could do this with the ink, but I'm just messing with the brush now since it's brand new. Okay. Oh, I know what I want to do. Use a nice red. Out of the M. Grams, I use Pyro Red, which is a pretty, pretty red. I'll just use it right there. For the... Might need to come right out of the pan to get it bright enough. Doing lettering with a brush is not the easiest thing to do. But it's fun to try it. It does, CB. The, this brush keeps, of course, keep in mind, this is the first time I've ever used it, but it keeps an awesome point. And it holds a perfect amount of water so far. So, yeah, I would say this Princeton brush is very, very nice. Not the best, but it'll work. I mean the painting, not the brush. The brush, I'm I'm really pleased with the brush. It feels good in your hand. It's weighted very nicely. And I'm comparing it to the um, black, black velvet silver paint brushes. This is the number eight. You can kind of see the difference. This is the number eight in the black velvet. This is the Princeton. Um, so... Yeah, can you see the difference? I'm trying to get it against a white background. Yeah, I have to say, I'm impressed. And um, Linda and Tim, I appreciate it very, very, very much. All right, let me get a pen out, decide what pen I'm going to use. I think I will use um, one of the Cul Copic multi-liners. Um, they're permanent. Um, the tips hold up well. Then black is really nice. You can, I've got it in a bunch of different tip sizes. So I'll start with the zero one for, well, no, I'm going to try the zero two for the outlining. If I don't like it, I'll move up to three. Three is about my favorite nib size for most everything. So let me hit it with a heat gun so I don't stick my hand in wet paint, which would be really something I'm famous for. Okay, bye, Martha. I'll talk to you to Martha.
tomorrow. Yeah, I kept thinking that, um, Linda, that, oh, it does. Yeah, that comes off. The thing I'm always scared about um, is wrecking those bristles. So it's like a little travel bra. Ooh, that makes it so awesome. Yeah, but I, I have to say, I'm I'm liking this a whole lot. All right, got to hit it with the heat gun. Heat gun. See, I stuck my hand in the red, wet red. I can't help myself. read that Barbara oh my god we live in a really sad society if a doctor has to put out a warning like that that is just that's too ridiculous for even words I don't even know what to say about that all right I'll stay away from that yeah it's dry enough I can put my hand on it oops my little nib is coming out I wonder if I change that one what the hell are you doing there hang on The nice thing about these um, Copic pens, I may have to replace this whole one. Um, the nib is wanting to jump out. I don't know why. Hmm. All right. Well, I'll go to the 2.5 then. That pen needs work. There will be almost no difference between the 0 0.2 and the 2.5. Yeah. See, this one's perfect. Hmm. Go figure. But I love a fine nib pen. Can you guys see okay? You want me to come in closer or what? And if your paper is dry, you shouldn't have to worry about these nibs. What the hell? It's not like wanting to write on this paper. I use these pens quite a bit. All right, let's just do the lettering underneath that while we're right here. And one of the things I like about the author of that Draw Your Day book is she um, uses a lot of different lettering styles on the same page. So I like that. Um When I say leaves everywhere, I mean everywhere. Right now, um, it was so beautiful yesterday. 
that I had the breezeway door open and um, the breezeway is just full of leaves so and I didn't have time well I didn't want to do it last night so yeah that's what I'll be doing later on is out there sweeping up the leaves And I'll go back in and, and probably um, use a fine tip pen or something to um, fill that in. And at this point, you don't really even need a waterproof pen, but I'm using one. So if I have to go back in and... Um, touch something up or add a color or something that I, I don't have to worry about the pen. Um, smearing at this point. And at this point, too, if I wanted to go in and add more shading or do other stuff, there's no rule that says you couldn't get out your colored pencils and, and touch it up here and there. I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave it just like this, but other than what I add with the black. But like at this point, you literally could do whatever you want. You know what I really wish you could get? I wish you could get a white with that fine a nib. I can't tell you how many times I've wanted that. The jelly rolls are good and the Sakura are good, but yeah. There needs to be a really, really fine nib, white, opaque pen. You know what I mean, jelly bean, jelly bean? Your cleaner will clean. Well, my cleaner, Dorothy, is me. So, yeah. Just saying. And the watercolor was pretty good, but I want a really, really solid, good black eye there. I am going to go back in with this squirrel and um, add some dark brown in this um, fur. I know it's hard for you guys to see, but it's really hard for me to draw this small. I don't know if you'll be able to see the black on that brown, but
it's quiet in here, sorry. For the most part now, this is from memory. Um, probably not the smartest thing in the world, but whatever. It's a draw your day. We'll um, clean off the nib occasionally because it does pick up some of that watercolor. And I really don't want to trash out these pens. That's not so bad. This paper is a little hard to draw on, I have to say. See how it's not wanting to draw? And I know the ink is fresh.
I didn't put anything on the um, yogurt package because I don't even remember what um, it looks like. Actually, this it's only like the second time I've bought it. So probably has a vanilla bean or something on it. We're not going to worry about it. I like doodling over drawings too, Barbara. I love the ink over watercolor. I think that's why I like um, working on those reverse coloring books so much. I really, really like doodling over the color. It's almost like you don't know where one stops and the other begins, you know. Now, hopefully, you'll be able to tell this is an Indian. Look at that. My cup looks just perfect. Did you spell yogurt? Y-O-G-U-R-T. Did I misspell it? Oh, I did. Oh, well, who cares? I'm not going to worry about it. Y-O-U. Well, the, I, I'm going to pull it out and look at it now, Terry. Now you got me wondering. But I know that is misspelled. Uh, pay attention, girl. Actually, I threw, drew this as a big old mountain of laundry. I didn't really have that much laundry yesterday. That's okay if you guys think I did. Until I find out about if companies come in next week, I have no clue what this week holds in store. I may be cleaning or I may not.
Now, one thing, Terry, when you asked about how we spell yogurt, we don't have an H in our yogurt. I don't think. Okay, those of you who can spell, I'm usually a pretty good speller, actually. Um, tell Terry how we spell yogurt. I'm not going to worry about it. That's for sure. I wasn't really sure how to go about drawing a pile of laundry either, but that looks pretty good, right? We spell it yogurt, huh? Just puzzling me. Thought maybe you spell it different. Okay, I think CB has it right. But we don't have an H in ours for sure. I know that. I'm going to pull out that container and look because I think it is spelled different. Maybe it's the Greek spelling because it's Greek yogurt. I don't know. I just buy it and eat it. Well, I don't even eat much of it anymore because that's another thing that gets my allergies going really bad. And ice cream is just a done deal now. I just, I cannot do ice cream. I know that. And I normally don't have too much trouble with um, butter. But I've switched to real butter now. Um, I mean, I always used real butter, but now um, I use it exclusively. Can you believe I'm going to draw that straight line without a ruler? Yeah, I like to surprise you guys sometimes. And I just got a new dryer, <laughs> so I don't know really exactly what's on, or washer. I got a washer and dryer. So I just drew dials on it. Like you don't have a U in color. I know, that's so stupid. Why do you add that extra U? It doesn't add anything, I don't think. <laughs> All right. Now, the Rolo candies. This pen is really not going to like writing on this because I use paint directly from the palette and it's on here pretty thick so this pen is going to hate that we don't care we're going to soldier on That's a little wonky. We don't care. And actually the Rolo, if I remember right, um, I'm going to bastardize their logo, but I'm sure the Rolo company won't call me. I heard a thing yesterday on social media, I'm sure, that some companies are having to change their logos because young people can't read their cursive. You just like to make things difficult. Why does that not surprise me, Terry? That laundry looks pretty clean. Well, if you ever saw Robert's laundry, Brenda, you would not be saying that. Robert Vaughn is the dirtiest person. <laughs> like, I am not even kidding you. He comes in here with his work clothes on. Oh, uh, oh, God, I want to shoot myself. 
and they smell like um, one time. <laughs> I probably shouldn't tell this. I probably told it before, though, because anything that's embarrassing, I love to tell. Um, I went out in the laundry room and he had taken his clothes off out in the laundry room and then come in the house because my laundry room is separated from my house by the breezeway. And I went out there and it stunk. It stunk like diesel fuel. And if you've ever smelled diesel, you know how gross diesel fuel smells. And I was just like flabbergasted. I was just like, I came back in the house and I said, Robert, are you pissing diesel now? <laughs> it, just, it just stunk. Like, so yeah, I was sure Janet was going to have a butt roll <laughs> You think I should put a butt on it? Why didn't I put a butt on something? I could always add one to the cup. I like the cup the best because it does look like an Indian now. Yeah, I thought he was pissing diesel. All right. Now I'm going to have to, I'm not sure I want to use this pen because this one is a pain in the foot. No, we had the phone number for Phone number for what? For, for phone number for uh, where we took her. Um, grasshopper? Grasshopper. It's in your phone. Give me your phone. I think it's out there. Add one to the pineapple. Oh, the butt on the pineapple? I could do that easy enough. Um, let me get Robert going here. But please um, leave here before you call. Okay. Okay? Because uh -huh. they don't want to listen to you talk to the repair people. Maybe you have to grunge those whites up. Maybe that's what I... Oh, I was going to add some shading anyway. Um, so... Um, I think I'm going to use this. This is, um, I'm just going to freehand this. God, I'm going to have to slow down though. So I don't, um, misspell words now B-E-A-U It was a beautiful autumn day. Oh, I didn't think that for a minute, Terry. Don't don't even think that. Okay, so I'll write over here. It was a Sunday. Um...
So I could have just as easily drawn that it was sunny. It was a Sunday and the temperatures were from 37 to 68. Now up here, I'll try and do this a little bit better. November 12th. And write the date because in a week from now, I won't remember what year it was. All right, and I hadn't planned any other of the other wording on it, but I think now you could just go in and um, add kind of what you want. I'm going to add a little bit of white. I'm going to, oh, I think for the grapes, I'm going to. The thing about the jelly roll on watercolor, it will absorb the color. So, and it's weird. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. So um, I'm not sure. <clears throat> like that red, I'm almost guaranteed that it will suck up that red in the purple. Now it's not wanting to write. Sometimes you can use that to your benefit, too, if it absorbs the, um, the paint. I'm going to try something. What did I do with my handy-dandy paint brush? Did I put it away? I know I had them both out here. How can I lose stuff? You guys, honestly, how can I lose stuff that quickly? There it is. Never mind. Focus, you freak. Was sitting on top of it. Um, It did not absorb the the red. Surprise me. Surprising. Okay. I think the only thing I'm not really very satisfied with. I mean, I'm liking it. But where is the little squirrel guy now that he's completely dry I think I'm going to go over him with mm, maybe some transparent red iron oxide
because I'm not going to draw all his little hairs in. Now I have to put a little highlight in his eyes. may have overworked that paper a little bit. I don't know. I like him a little bit better now. I can go back in with the pen later and give him a little bit of fur. I'm not going to do it on stream. Um, how would you draw dust mopping underneath the secretary in the TV cabinet in the living room? Here's how I would do it. Do you have like a Swiffer? A Swiffer mop? Let me get a little piece of paper here. I wouldn't even draw the whole furniture, but just draw maybe where the legs. Let's just say that's a piece of furniture that's not very far up off the floor. And then... Oops, actually the handle would be going, if this is going up, the handle would have to be going up like this, say. So then you have to adjust the size of the mop. And then whatever color you chose for your floor, say it's a wood floor, you have wood grain, which would be really fun to paint. I think actually um, make one part of it where the Swiffer hasn't mopped slightly darker than um, than a swath behind it right like this is going to be clean and sparkly you could even do sparklies if you want um yeah where the mop is getting ready to go under the furniture so actually the handle could be going you know at a different angle because you have to bend it down to fit under there so your mop handle just test it on your actual mop handle and see the squirrel is ready for he's they're getting ready for winter brenda oh my gosh you have no idea and then the furniture, the actual furniture, you could do this as fun as you want. You could draw some drawers on it with some fun handles, or you could just um, do it like, you know, whatever your regular is, you know? But I wouldn't draw the whole piece of furniture. I'd just draw the map, go or the, the map, the mop going under it like that. What else can I draw? Get out Pictionary. Given the task, I would prefer to do the actual cleaning than be challenged to draw said challenge. <laughs> uh -huh. 
sometimes you just got to step outside and um what you were actually doing and think what it would look like to a third party sitting out there cool barbara yeah that's how i would do it now the only other thing let's look at draw your day and see how she you know because i have a fair amount of white space in here and she not uncommonly will use, I mean, I could go back in here and add a bunch of leaves because the leaves are everywhere. But she not uncommonly just picks a design to fill in the white space. Or look, she's just got some lines here where it seems reasonable. This one she leaves empty. Um, I was thinking about taking a, a Neo Color 2 and doing something like this, you know, just adding some blue. She's got dots. So, you know, just when you think you're finished, it doesn't necessarily have to be finished. So let me, um, let me get a Neo color too. We were talking about those at Dee Dee's this morning, about water soluble products. And, um, I mean, I, since I got the Neo color twos and believe me, I have a lot of water soluble products. Most of them I've gotten rid of now, but. Um, if I had to advise anybody, I would say the best thing you can do is just save up. Buy a small set um, to get you started. Yeah, I like the spray of leaves too. See, so I could do that. Um, like, I like that one. So rather than just drawing the object, what did she do around that leaf? She did some green grass underneath it, which I guess I could do. Let's do some of these neo colors. Let's use it. I don't remember which set I bought, honestly. But the nice thing about, okay, where's that piece of paper that I just threw away? that I just drew on for Barbara. Oh, well, I can do it on this. Um, if you don't want to re-wet your paper again and saturate your paper, take a baby wipe. And the nice thing about the baby wipe is you may end up getting some of the texture of the watercolor paper too. So... But a baby wipe is enough to go ahead and um, dissolve the the Neo Color Twos, maybe where it gets in there tight or something. Um, you could use a brush, but I for this I'm not even going to worry about that. But then you end up with a little bit of the texture of the paper with that too. So. Um, you like the squirrel and the Rolos? Looks like the squirrel is eating a Rolo. And um, um, let me see. Oh, I do need to erase. If I'm going to. I think since one of the predominant colors on this is kind of that orangish, um, I think I will Let's see what color this is. I've never done this before, but I might try it. This is Sharpie pens. Um, I like them for small areas. They come in good colors. So for smaller areas, just do yourself a favor. I hope we have a lot of these beautiful autumn days 
before it gets freezing ass cold. I hate the cold. I hate the cold. Now that is one thing I may order for myself for my birthday. <laughs> is a new either um, heating blanket or a heating pad. Because I know winter's coming and I, oh, I hate freezing my butt off. I do like winter clothes better than summer clothes, though. I do like sweatshirts and um, sweatpants and stuff like that. So the clothes don't bother me. Oh, thank you, Brenda. Even though I wasn't invited to your, I wish you were your. Ah, oh, thank you, Barbara. If I was having a sweet 16 girl, you'd be there doing the music for me. I promise you that. But I'm not um, having a party. I'll be having myself a party in the morning with my coffee. How about that? All right. So I'll use, let's see, what other color? I use the green for leaves everywhere. I just wanted to see what that would look like on there. Two green. Two green. Um, and a really nice blue for the November 12th. I've had these pens, these creative memory pens forever. And I use them. I mean, I don't use them every day, but... Those have been the nicest, longest-lasting pens ever, except for Tombow. And I looked at it, rebuying a set of Tombow the other day. <gasps> have you guys seen the price of Tombow pens? Holy crapola. They really like those pens. Oh, you need a new one, Brenda. So who knows what else I might write on here. But I think I will go ahead and fill in a little bit of the background. Let me think which blue. Here are my blue choices for a light blue. I think I'm going to do this one. It's just light blue. And this one is blue turquoise. I think I'm just going to do that one. I like the brightness of this one. What's this one? Oh, that's one I just put back. Duh. Okay, here's another kind of light bluish green. Some of them, they put it up here. Sometimes they put it down here. That's turquoise. Yeah, I think I'm going to use this one. Now, see, by using that um, pen in there, I'm going to have to really stay away from that because it will smear with the water. But Neo Color 2 um, dissolves so nicely and so easily. Um, it shouldn't be a problem. All right, do I get a big old mop brush? Let me try the baby wipe and see how it works. You might spend three hours trying to fix it. 
Now get on the phone or get on the computer and um, order yourself up a new one. That's what I would do. See how easily that just dissolves. So nice. And if it leaves a little bit of texture, I don't mind a bit. So baby wipes become your tool. I use baby wipes for everything. Neo colors are magic, aren't they, Brenda? They are the most awesome supply, honestly. I, whatever you pay for them, and see if I need a small space with a baby wipe, I can get pretty small with that. Remember to tuck it up into your hand, though, because you don't want a wet edge running over your watercolor. But you can get in pretty small areas with a baby wipe. They're awesome. And I don't necessarily want smearage, you know. So stay away from anything you don't want smeared. But otherwise, they work awesome. Got a little bit of smearage right there. That's okay, though. Doesn't bother me. Nice vintage feel. Yeah, I like it. I'll always remember that November 12th was a beautiful autumn day, sunny, 37 to 68 degrees. There were leaves everywhere, pretty typical of Oklahoma in the autumn, for sure. And I could have, you know, like there, there were a ton of things I could have drawn. I could have drawn the lake. I could have drawn an acorn. Um, yeah, you know, it's amazing when you think about it, what you could choose to draw, you know. I mean, I just chose to draw a pile of laundry because that's my Sunday as a rule. But, yeah, just the simplest thing and that I ate Rolo candy. I love Rolo candies. I just don't let myself buy them. So, yeah, who knows? I'm probably done with this, probably other than put some hair on the squirrel. He's a little plain, but, yeah, other than that, that's going to be that. Thanks, Terry. Thanks, Dee Dee. Neo Color 2 were one of the first, if not the first, art supply you ever bought. Wow. Dang, Barbara, you could have been teaching us all about Neo Color 2s because I didn't know about them. I probably had seen them in art stores, but because they look like crayons, I didn't really particularly care about them. And I was doing mostly graphite and colored pencil then. So, um, you know, Crayolas or anything that were wax based, I probably wouldn't have been interested in. Um, and then when Dee Dee showed them, I was like, okay, I'm getting those. I am getting those. And the thing I like about them is you can do a great big background like that 
really easily, you know, with a baby wipe and a nail color too. Boom. You got a layer of color down immediately. I almost wish now I already put it away. I'm going to say I wish I'd gone down into the beautiful more. Let's see if I can get some off here. Where's all that blue? I should probably stop before I start and goof something up. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? I would be famous for that. So anyway, I will have a happy, happy birthday tomorrow. Not doing anything special. Oh, Barbara, thank you. Um, laundry every day. Ugh. I never learned about them till Cheryl Sievers swearing by them a couple years ago. Now I pull them out whenever I need another something on a piece. Exactly. You should use permanent black ink on your outlining. Yes, yes. That's why I chose these Copic multi-liners to go around all that. Um, and this, this um, is permanent as well. Now, I'm sure it's going to act different on different papers, but I don't think I got any smearage. So, but yeah, these Copic multi-liners, they were a good purchase as well. And then you can replace the nibs and the ink cartridges. So, oh, I might get a card. That would be so awesome. Thank you, Linda. Go give Tim a big hug for me. Tell me I'm thinking about him, and I will. Um, I'll get something off in the mail to Tim. So, thanks, Judy. All right, you guys. Um, yeah, the color, the the watercolor um, will smear. Um, especially if you've gone directly from the palette to your, um, to your page and you have, you know, maybe haven't eliminated all the binders. So it's really just the watercolor sitting on your paper to get more water added to it. That's why it's good to go from a watercolor, um, from your pan like this onto a palette and get ample water and then add more to it so that that you pretty much gotten rid of all the binder and all you're doing is putting the pigment on i'm terrible about doing that so i'll end up with smearage but it's okay all right you guys i'm gonna go do something different for a little while i didn't even do much today and um this place is a damn mess so um Go have a really fun day. I will have a fun day tomorrow. And I will see all of you at Dee Dee's on Wednesday. And then we got holiday week. Holy crap, Ola. So go out and uh, say a prayer for the world, you guys. Say a prayer for Tim. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Go um, try and be kind. It was a good day in person and in the drawing. Thank you, CB. All right, Terry. You guys go take care. Be kind. Love y'all. See you later. Bye.